Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out of the ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Uh, today it is Short Story Tuesday, so I wanted to talk about an interesting short story that I read recently. Uh, and uh, it is also Black History Month, so I wanted to talk about a short story from a Black writer. Uh, and today's short story is all about uh, a woman reflecting on her life while sitting or sitting in a car at a, at a strange location, or somewhat strange location, I am referring to The Lookout by Cyrus Coulter, which was published, originally published in 1961, but it is found in his short story collection, The Beach Umbrella, which came out in the, in the 70s, I believe. For those who don't know, Cyrus Coulter was a Black American writer uh, who wrote quite a few short story collections. Um, seems like that's predominantly what he was known for. I, I can't tell if he wrote any novels or anything more, uh, but this just might be uh, what he's what he's most known for. Known for. Uh, and he um, uh, won, I think, a couple of awards for his work, although he doesn't seem to be as famous as many other uh, black authors of the time. Uh, and he was writing in the mid, -19, mid to late 1900s. Uh, pretty interesting uh, writer, uh, and I'm glad that I am talking about him today because, you know, we have a tendency to talk about the more well-known names uh, for Black Americans, but not the Cyrus Coulters of this world who wrote somewhat compelling stories, but don't, don't get recognized as much. Uh, and so without further ado, let's talk about The Lookout. I will do a summary, a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. So The Lookout focuses on Mildred. She is a, a mother and a wife uh, who, at the beginning of the story, um, we, she notes that she's not really um, happy with what's going on with her family as of late, so she uh, goes for a drive um, around town and ends up... Uh, um, like parked outside of a of an acquaintance's house, a friend's house. Although the way that uh, Mildred describes some of these women doesn't really seem like they're um, as much as friends as as you would think. Uh, and it's also during a snowstorm, which uh, Mildred is thankful for because it helps obscure uh, her presence and people can't see that she's just sitting outside her friend Laura's house. But Mildred is parked outside of there and she sees a parade of uh, Laura's friends as Laura has a bridge club um, sort of gathering uh, that uh, Mildred seemingly wasn't invited to, uh, and her friends show up, and we see Mildred's thoughts on some of these friends, how their lives seem to be going pretty great, whereas Mildred's life is not um, where she really wants it to be. And so we see that life comparison uh, going on there. And then um, uh, eventually she decides that she's had enough of um, of being outside of Laura's house. And so she uh, decides to go to her mom's house. But along the way, she stops for uh, some alcohol at the liquor store, which she says that her mom will be upset about. But um, Laura or uh, Mildred doesn't particularly care too much about that as long as her family doesn't find out. Uh, and she she also notes as the story comes to a close that it is it has stopped snowing. She's a little bit unhappy with that because uh, the world is is more dreamy and other things are possible um, it, when it is snowing and. So it's, it's no longer doing that. And that's where the story ends there. In terms of analysis, this is a pretty short, short story, but there is a fair bit worth talking about in it. Uh, one of the main themes that um, pops up here is that of the disappointing life, someone reflecting on their life and realizing that it is not what they wanted it to be. Mildred seems to have expected more out of life. There seemed to be a lot of promise when she was younger, uh, especially with her husband, but uh, things did not go the way that she she wanted it to go. As she notes, uh, Wes, her husband, is plateauing. Uh, he, he seems content in his job. Uh, he is just watching football most days and... and doing poker uh, outside of 
the football season and uh like he doesn't really aspire to do much more than that his life is pretty content wes has has made it uh he's also i i believe he's black in this story so you know to be part of the black middle class when that hasn't always been an opportunity for people who are black uh like it's it's okay to be content where you're at um but it seems like mildred is off there complaining and 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 whatnot and noting that her life could have been a lot better there could have been much more promise and whatnot especially when she compares her life her life to laura's or one of laura's friends although there there does seem to be a few problems with with um laura's marriage or sorry mildred's marriage uh in particular there's an interesting quote that i would like to read to you from this lately to her secret disgust he had been watching the late tv movies he had long ago left the supervision of the two boys completely to her and sometimes she found she had three boys on her hands instead of two so it seems like her um as she notes like her husband isn't maturing at all he's not growing up he's uh, she has to take care of him in the same way that she has to take care of her boys and she notes like you know the, the boys, like, they're, they're not going to grow up to be men if the father isn't playing a hand in the uh, in, in raising the, the boys. Uh, which you could argue one way or another about whether or not that's correct. But it, it seems like Mildred wants a co-parent. Like, she wants the dad to actually be the dad. And he's not really doing that at the moment. So, again, that would lead to a somewhat disappointing life. And for Mildred, Laura's life seems so much better than hers. Uh, it seems like uh, Laura's obtained something that Laura, or Laura's obtained something that Mildred hasn't quite been able to do. Uh, and um, the, like Mildred would want to escape from this. And I think that's what the lookout is, is means in this story. Like she's able to just park on the street and for a moment she's able to see all these other women's lives and escape from her own life in a, in a, in a way. Uh, although you could argue that, it, that it's not really helping. It's distressing her even more, uh, given that she's comparing her lives to other individuals. So uh, you can see that Coulter is trying to show that Mildred is um, finding her life to not have gone the way that she wants. The snowstorms also seems to be an interesting and important element of the story. It seems like, much like the lookout, like the a snowstorm is an escape for Mildred. As she notes herself, the world is less clear during snowstorms, dreamy even, and anything seems to be uh, possible. You could argue that like she's able to dream of a better life for herself, a life where she got what she wanted, or she, she was close to obtaining what she wanted, and that um, anything is possible. As I just noted, anything is possible. Uh, that this doesn't have to be just where she ended up. She could go beyond where she is now and have um, a better outcome, a better uh, financial outcome, a better personal outcome, whatever she wants there. And you see that sadness when the snow stops because she's forced to realize that the um, that the, the better world isn't possible, that she's stuck in this life unless she makes a drastic change like divorce or forces her husband to, to sort of aspire to something greater, which maybe at this point in his life, that maybe that's not what he wants to do. Uh, so the snowstorm is a very important element of the story. There's also what seems to be racial elements of the story, and maybe I'm just enforcing that on on the narrative without it actually being there. But there are some times where the where um, where uh, Mildred uh, or the narrator note um, some aspect of of race that feels important in the story. Coulter, uh, seemingly, he notes that these characters are black, uh, the black middle class, uh, which is important given that, uh, you know, that was kind of held away from a lot of black Americans, uh, either through redlining or not being given great jobs after World War II. So the middle class kind of escaped for many of those individuals. Uh, but it wasn't taken away from everyone. There were some people who were allowed to obtain that, that um, social standing that many others weren't. Uh, and so like life seems to be good, but, um, but it could be better for uh, for Mildred. Like M what Mildred is hoping for is not just the middle class, but other people who have been allowed to obtain the upper classes, the elites of society, uh, which has especially been blocked off for people of color. So 
Mildred, I, I think Mildred, a lot of Mildred's problems is, stems from that, where it's like, is the middle class all that we're going to be able to obtain? What if we want something more? What if we want to be socialites and, and fancy and have money and all sorts of things like that? It doesn't, maybe that's part of the problem uh, in, in, in the story, that it's not that this life isn't good enough for her, it's that there could be more and that they've reached a, uh, a plateau. Again, that word right there. Um, but there's also some interesting elements about the race for the for the um for the socialites in this story particularly noting um that laura and her friends uh i think they might be light-skinned black individuals if i'm reading the story properly and they just note that there's no dark skin individuals um among laura amongst laura and laura's colleagues and mildred is described as copper colored I, I, I don't know if that means she's lighter skinned or whatnot uh maybe more so than um Maybe maybe just as much or less than or like she's she's darker than than Laura is. So Mildred like feels uh, like excluded from Laura's party because of that. Uh, but it should be noted that these women, uh, Laura's friends, are part of the NAACP. They're proponents of, of fighting discrimination. But as the narrator notes, like they don't really hang out with individuals who are black, which feels like commentary on Coulter's part, very subtle commentary that maybe these women are all talk and that they they would never deign to hang out with someone of lower social class. Like they, they're, they're more, they're hoping for, you know, equality but they're they're not really willing to put in the actual legwork to get there um again i think i'm kind of like enforcing that on the story but it does seem there and so i think i think there's something worth talking about that maybe you might find in in other um uh, cyrus coulter short stories anyway those are my thoughts on the lookout um by cyrus coulter a pretty solid uh short story um one that i think is a great addition uh to black history month and the the short story exploration i've been doing on this channel i recommend it to you out there uh if you can go out and find it either in this uh uh, on its own, which you might be able to do, or in the short story collection if you're able to find it. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below if you have anything to say about my review here. Otherwise, uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that other people can find out about this author or the short story if they don't already know. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your uh, weird and life-comparing travels. Farewell.